Hello. It is really bright out here. So a few weeks ago, I made a mistake. I held the poll, what did you guys want to see next? And this one won. So a few days after that, I attempted it. Let's go. Wait, it's not perfect, but I will take it. And I fell asleep at hour nine. No, when did I fall asleep? I just remember laying on the bed as a break. But it was totally my fault because I started at 6 p.m. Why would I do that? So today, two weeks later, I'm gonna try again. I got my practice log, it's nice and portable, and I need to equip myself with ammo to stay up. So let's go ahead and get some caffeine. So, wow, my hair looks really bad. So, a lot of you are probably wondering, oh, Mr. Saxologic, why are you doing this? This is such a terrible idea. Why practice 12 hours a day? Well, you hear all those stories about people like Charlie Parker, who would practice 11 to 15 hours a day, every day for three to four years. Oh my God, I just almost ran over some ducks. That would have been a sad time. So I'm thinking at the end of these 12 hours, I'll literally be able to play like Charlie Parker. No, I'm joking. I don't actually think that. Honestly, I'm just curious. There's many references out there that tell you that you don't need to practice 12 hours a day to become a virtuoso one day. But I'd still feel like it'd make a fun video. You know, it'd present certain challenges. I've certainly never practiced 12 hours in one day. The most I did on one day was eight hours. And that just kind of happened on accident. I was just playing and I lost track of time. Okay, I'm at the gas station now. Let's, let's go in. Oh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, Red Bull is very unhealthy. I don't recommend drinking this. So don't drink this. And we'll get this flavor. I'll get the classic flavor. Very bad for you. During these 12 hours, my phone will be on airplane mode. So basically, I'm going to lock myself into a whole different realm, totally disconnected from this earth. And I'll feel my social skills decline to a level even lower than it already is. And at the end of each hour, I will vlog how I feel and what I worked on. All right, I'm almost home. Okay, okay, there's those ducks. I have to show you this. There are so many of them. Holy crap. Don't run them over, don't run them over. Very good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, I'm at my house. All right, I'm going to down this. Shout out to Steve Cortica, my Red Bull bro. Wow. I'm just slobbered everywhere. That's very gross. All right, here's my very messy room, but my very glorious case. From Boston Sack Shop? Look at this. All right, check it out. Look at that velvet. And then the neck is contained in here. Wow, wow. It's just so beautiful. This is the absolute greatest case I've ever had. I just absolutely love this. Thank you so much, Jack Fanukin. If you want this case, you can use code SAXOLOGIC for 10% off. And really, 10% off of any Boston Sax Shop product. All right, anyway, it is time to get started. All right, so first, we're going to turn on airplane mode here. Told everyone goodbye and that I'll see them tomorrow. And now we're gonna turn on the timer and I'm gonna start off with some overtones. All right, well, it's time. So the first hour, let me stop it, has been completed. So I started around 3 p.m., not much better than 6 p.m., but I will survive this time because I don't want to try this again, unless it changes my life. So this page was from the last attempt I did. So this is the first hour that I just accomplished. First thing I did was overtone matching.
just trying to make sure I'm in tune with the horn. Then I opened up this book and did several exercises from it. And then I turned on a tuning drone and just made sure I could play all the registers in tune. No! Yeah. The front fingers and the altissimo notes can get a little tricky. And then I took this lick that I'm working on in 12 keys and made sure I could do it in tune with the whole drone. my ears too, you know. And then I worked on that same lick without the drone. Anyway, alright, so let's go ahead and start that next hour, starting now. All right, it's been hour two. I'm turn that off for now. Here's what I worked on now. I did that line in six and a half keys. I was working on the seventh one and then hour two came on. The reason why it took so long though is I got stumped in the key of B. I was really having trouble with the palm key part. So I started experimenting with palm key risers and I find that I think my fingers prefer this set the most. I've been meaning to try the palm key risers, I just kept waiting. But I figured, oh, I'm about to practice for the next 10 hours, so I might as well. By the way, if you're curious of what my setup today is, this is the 10M Fan Daddy-O mouthpiece. I really like it. Also know that the 10M Fans are great because Dave Pollock uses them. And I love Dave Pollock's playing. I've loved this playing for many years now. <laughs> and so I was like, Dave Pollock plays on this? It's probably good then. That's how it works, right? And the ligature I'm playing is one by Carbonissimo. It is pure carbon fiber. It feels like a feather, really. But if you try to bend it, it's really, really hard to bend. It's, I honestly think it's probably even harder to bend than my gold ligature. The Van Dorn MO here. Now, do I notice a difference with the ligatures? Not really. I just think this looks cool. That's all that matters. And the reed I'm using is, of course, Boston Sax Shop reeds. Very, very excellent reeds. I love these reeds. All right, so I'm going to tackle the rest of those keys on this lick, or musical line, whatever you want to call it. I, I'm starting to hate the word lick. Anyway, let's begin. All right, the third hour has hit. Here's what I worked on. I got the remaining keys of that line. I forget where I get the line from, but I did it a long time ago, but I just never took the time to put in 12 keys. And after that, I was working on my altissimo fingerings. I'm still really sharp up there. It's not the mouthpiece fault, it's just me, so. Working on my ear. But the main part I'm glad I worked on was just getting the fluidity of the fingers, releasing some tension. If I can get this altissimo to feel more and more like the rest of the horn, then I can put 100% attention on the actual sound and pitches rather than like 60% of the attention on the fingers and then 40% of the attention on the actual intonation. So that is the work in progress too. Um, I can't help but look at the clock and go, geez, I have another nine hours left. Everything I just did, I have to do three more times. So the dread is starting to really settle in. I was going strong at first, but let's just keep going. All right, hour four is complete. So the sun's starting to go down, and I don't have much lighting in this place. Let me go and turn on the light here. Ah! Okay, so what I worked on was diatonic sevens and melodic minor, forwards, backwards, and I went all up into the altissimo register.
Very taxing on the lips. I'm probably gonna have really red lips uh, tomorrow. That's okay. Then I did the jazz articulation exercise. I've discovered this exercise a while ago. I haven't done it too much lately, but figured I have 12 hours. Why not bring it back? Okay, so I'm feeling the dread, but I'm starting to live in the dread, you know? So I'm just accepting it because I have eight more hours. I can't be practicing with the negative mindset or this is going to be a very bad time. So whatever, got eight hours left. It's a third done. 4, 8, 12. So 12 hours of pure saxophone time, I don't know if I can do that. My throat is going to die. So I still need to get these 12 hours in, so I'm going to move to the piano for a bit. Alright, it is time to get started. Alright, we have hit hour 5. So uh, my brain is kind of like done. You know, My brain is like, look, why is there still a saxophone in my mouth? Get it out. I really, I think it's just I haven't taken a break. You could totally practice this many hours. I'm thinking about taking a break. I haven't even eaten today. Well, I did eat a donut, a strawberry donut. Anyway, this is what I did for this hour. On piano, I practice with just my right hand, all the half diminished sevens, all 12 keys, all inversions. And then I did the same for this shape called a Lydian grip that I learned from this school. Then I listened to three different versions of this tune. I wish I could video it, but I don't want to risk getting uh, a copyright strike. And then as the hour was ending, I started to practice the diminished major seven, just to get back into warming up on the saxophone. My throat starting to feel shot, so I have to practice pretty quietly to keep going, but I'm glad my amateur and lips are still hanging in there. All right, hour six, here we go. All right, hour six. So for this hour, I didn't even touch my saxophone. So the first thing I did was improvise on piano. I just freely improvised. I didn't really think of anything else. I guess I was just cleansing my brain from woodwind. And then I spent the rest of the hour working on Latin rhythms that my teacher gave me. I'm really shocked how fast time went by. Some of these came to me naturally, some of them didn't. But when they weren't, I kept thinking, uh, my brother would get this. So I persevered and just kind of obsessed over it. I think this was a really good hour because saxophone players with really good time probably know how to do all of these exercises. And my time could always use some improvement. All right, well, time to start hour seven. All right, we have finished hour seven. So what I did for this hour was really focus on my time. I don't know if it's because of the airplane mode, so there isn't much stimuli going on, but I was literally able to just sit down and just tap along with the metronome at 40 beats per minute for about 43 minutes. At the end of those 43 minutes, I got a lot better, but I'm still a long way to go from the time of that of like a drummer or something. I always thought I had pretty decent time till my teacher here at the school uh, made me clap with the metronome at a pretty slow tempo. And if you're doing it right, you shouldn't be able to hear the metronome at all because you guys are so aligned together that it's just one timbre together. So I did that almost obsessively, but really I was in a meditative state. I was just sitting on the chair. Just... But after those 43 minutes, I started transcribing and my friend from the school, David Mason, showed me this awesome app and I have been using it lately. Check it out, it's called Audio Stretch right here. You click this guy. So you can literally screen record whatever you want from YouTube, click this little button, and then this menu should pop up. You want to press video library and it's going to pull up all your videos in your phone and you put in what you screen record and boom the audio waveform is here basically the reason why this is such a boss of an app is check it out you can play stuff and say there's a voicing you really want or there's a certain note that's really just giving you trouble you can literally do this you can press and hold If you want to press play, you just really, really, really good app. All right, time to start back up the timer. All right. All right, I lost track of time. So two and almost a half hours went by. So I transcribed the entire tune, the version that Sonny Rollins did it. And I just proofread myself with the eye reel changes and yeah the eye reel changes are way different um, unless I'm just horribly wrong I don't think I'm wrong I, I checked with 
multiple courses. I'm just gonna go with these. Yeah, I'm really tired. It is 1.29 a.m. Honestly, I think I am going to down that other Red Bull. So yeah, let me get it from the fridge. Here it is. This is for Steve. Steve, you're the man. Very delicious. Very delicious. I have not eaten today, which is pretty sad. No, actually I'm gonna eat right now. I'm gonna take a break. I deserve a break. I'm gonna go to McDonald's. This timer will be off till I come back. Oh, yes sir, yes sir, very healthy. Are you kidding me? Mm, 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 mm. Yes sir. Wow, look at my lips, they look like... It is hour 11 now. What I did during those 90 minutes is free improvisation for a while. I just improvise over the vamp of that tune, at least on the Sonny Rollins version. I'm also sweating. My air conditioner has not worked in two weeks. I feel like I'm dying, but then I remember that there's probably deserted, uncharted islands where tribes still live and they sit in the sun all day or hunt in the sun all day. And I'm like, well, I have no excuse. Plus I have a lot of water. I don't drink that much water. So the hot makes me drink the water. So that's probably a good thing. Something that's a little interesting is that this already has a bite mark on it. And I put this rubber thing on yesterday. Dang it. When I put my teeth on it, my teeth gets right in that hole, and I'm like, no, I don't want this. But that's okay. All right, so the last hour. Wow, I can't believe it's almost done. That break really did the trick. Um, it really felt like I just first started the practice session. All right, starting the timer back up now. Oh! <laughs> like there's a tear right right here ah ah it feels like someone just took a knife a knife and just ah, just said ah. Ah. you know what i mean <laughs> At last, it is all over. 12 hours, I did it, and look, the sun's coming back up, wow. It is 6.56 a.m. I have class today, I have an 11 a.m. I'll get a good nap in. <laughs> all right, so was the 12 hours worth it? Absolutely not. I'm probably never doing that again. Look, if you're the type to practice 12 hours, Good for you. I didn't really like that I had to sacrifice my entire day. But some people are totally into it, and those people usually play way better than I do. You know, I'm fine with it. I could have gone rock climbing with some friends. I could have eaten more than just McDonald's. Practicing 12 hours a day is just not my style. It doesn't make me happy. Now I've come to realize there's a lot of flaws in my approach here. I practice way too much technique-based stuff, and not nearly enough literature. I mean, I only practice one tune, and I got like a few minutes of a transcription done. 
but it really reinforced what that daily limit kind of feels like. You know, after that fourth hour, I was taxed, I was done. So if I could set a weekly goal and get it done within four hours or less, just really, really intense work, then that's all I need for the day. And I'm glad, I, I don't wanna practice 12 hours a day. Like I said, if, if that's your thing, awesome. I just personally am not happy when I'm just in a room all day practicing. So I think people that practice 12 hours a day aren't like, okay, I'm gonna practice 12 hours today. I think they just pick up their horn or instrument, and if the music just so happens to lead them that way, they just lose track of time. Especially back in the day where there's no internet, no video games. Playing an instrument was literally the coolest thing you could possibly do. Especially if you're living in a neighborhood or a city where everyone's playing music, then that makes total sense. I think the biggest lesson I learned from this is how important those first four hours are. At least for me, maybe some of you have a, a higher threshold than I do. I'm just some random dude on YouTube. Now I'm really curious, what would have happened if I transcribed for 12 hours? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do that. Nothing replaces that progress you feel when you come back to something for multiple consecutive days. I just feel like one long session in one sitting is honestly just pretty useless. Unless it just happens naturally. But I don't know, what do you guys think? All right, so I'm calling this the Charlie Parker Challenge. I'm gonna nominate three people to do this Charlie Parker Challenge. Sorry beforehand, First person is Steve Cortica. Good luck. Next person is Chad Lefkowitz Brown. Or should I say Chad Ladies Man Brown, you tall, blue-eyed, bearded, dread master. And the third one, Ryan Devlin. I feel like you do this every day anyway, so show me how it's done. All right, well, it's been fun. I'm gonna take a nap before class. <laughs> Thank you for 112,000 subscribers. Oh my God, have a good day. So something really interesting just happened. I had a lesson with my teacher. It was the first time I played the saxophone today because you know, I went to bed pretty late or early, whatever you wanna call it. And the saxophone actually felt way, way different. It felt like a third arm. I felt way closer to it. The keys, for some reason, felt bigger, if that makes sense. They just felt good. And it felt like my fingers were part of the key. So maybe this 12-hour shed has something to it. Imagine how it would feel after a week of doing this, or three to four years of doing this. I don't know. I, I ragged on it too soon. By the way, check this out. I love this. Incredible. I'm gonna go back up and get some Starbucks.